being live here at Tubby Raymond Field on the campus of University of Delaware here in Newark, Delaware for what is a really special event within the state of Delaware, the 62nd annual DFRC Blue Gold Football Game. I am Patrick Garianis. I'm joined here with my broadcast partner, Jason Winchell, and it doesn't get much better than this kind of a tradition, Jason, this Blue Gold All-Star Football Game. Yeah, this is one of the best games in the state. Good uh, senior game for all these seniors playing their last football game here in Delaware. So right now the blue team, which is the north, which is composed of Northern High School football players, is kicking off to the South team on to kick for the blue team is number five Maverick Jackson of Caravel. He squibs it down the field and that's fielded by the blue. Can't quite see the number that is going to be returned to the 35 yard line as number 58. Mike Shasini from Charter School of Wilmington on the return or with the tackle. So now the gold's going to take over. And Jason, with this game, there's a little bit different rules than what you normally see. And uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's an odd defense. It's called a 5-2-4 Oklahoma defense. Um, tackles on line of scrimmage, down position, and on any part of offensive tackles. Um, the second man out front from the middle of the offensive line. And I believe there's no blitzing allowed as that squib pass goes out and goes across the 40-yard line for about seven-yard gain. That was number 13, Michael Cradle of Glasgow. Picks up about eight on the play. So second down and two here. Nolan Henderson, who will be playing a lot of football games here in the future, is the quarterback for the gold team. Yeah, he's won two state championships on this field, so he's used to playing on this field. Looks to be some kind of substitution as Creedle seemed to lost the shoe on that. Number 28, John Castro of Dover steps in. So here we go. Henderson lines up behind the center. Looks at the defense. Claps for the ball. Play action fake. Thrown out. It's intercepted. What a play there. Number two, Kerry Galloway of AI DuPont. Picks off Nolan Henderson and changed possession early in this one. Jason. Yeah, he read that one. He's uh, uh, goal came out throwing the first couple of throws, and that's what Henderson does at Smyrna. And a great job there by um, the defense reading that play and picking it off. Fantastic job. So after the turnover, the blue team offense coming out here, led by Justin Benick of Wilmington Friends. Yeah, he led Friends to the Division II championship game where they lost to Woodbridge this year. As you can see, trips to the wide side as there's motion coming across. First play up the middle. And it's going to be a pickup of about five or six on the play. Tackle made by number 68, Antonio Johnson of Laurel. That, I think that was number 10. Who was that on that carry, Jason? I think it was number 10, Corey Kent of Howard. Yes. I believe you're right. A lot of early, quick pace in this one early. Both teams kind of no huddle, quick paced offense. Benick just puts that one in the dirt as he felt the pressure coming from big number 98 there. Or is that number 88? I think that's number 88, 88 Jameer Smith of Smyrna. Smyrna. He's a, 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 he was in there, good pass rush, and so it brings up a big third down here early in this game. Third and about three upcoming here for the Blue Squad as they're listed in our programs. Blue Squad and Gold Squad. Yes. Benick takes the snap, quick pass, and that is deflected and knocked away. Nice play by number 41, Joshua Hutchinson of Smyrna ever. Penalty marker on the field. Yes. It was downfield, I believe. Looks like it could be on the defense, as you can see the blue team starting to clap. And speaking, this is an appropriate time to announce our referees, or the officials for this contest, as they make a call here. Referees going to be Bob Collins, umpire Jerry Toner, Linesman Adam Barbus, line judge Don Ben, side judge Andrew Holtz, field judge Mitch Ruoff, back judge Jim Bailey, clock operator Rick Stuckey, and the chain crew of Ed Aiken, Fran Burster, Eric Thompson, and Pete Clark. And of course, Robert Collins, the DFRC coordinator of officials. An all star official crew. Without a doubt. So, yeah, that was one thing we talked about, Jason. This could be an illegal blitz, it was, potentially. Or? It was an illegal alignment, I believe, on the defense was the original call, but now it looks like they're waving off the flag. 
Yeah, they did. Because once again, like like we talked, like you talked about in the beginning here, you cannot blitz. The linebackers have to be at least three yards from the line of scrimmage. The cornerbacks have to be three yards behind the linebackers, and the safeties must be five yards deep from the line of scrimmage. So it's no a lot of no press no coverage right. in this. So blue team lining up to punt. As Maverick Johnson here for Caravel and then Del Percio back deep for the gold squad. And I can't quite oh. see you this second. There's a fake up the middle. And it's going to be close. He might be a little short that here looks, on this one. Yeah, it looks like they're a little short there, Pat. Snap to the up back. Angelo Ortiz and William Penn. And he is going to be, he is, he's, he's tackled short. So another turnover, a turnover on downs here for the blue team. And yeah, gold's going to take possession. And you see these kind of plays in, the, in an all-star game like this. That's what's so neat about it. And it was fourth and three, and they tried the the fake play, and it just didn't work. They only got two out of the three yards. So here comes Henderson out once again, trying to command the goal team here. Two by two set. They're going to motion the runner back out. That's Jimmy Atkins. I believe that was number 14. Henderson scrambles outside, looking deep, keeps the ball, is going to run, and he can scoot. Gets to about the 40-yard line where he's tackled. Nice play there by Matthew Bowe of Caravel Academy. And a couple of flags. Eight-yard gain. A couple markers come out here. Let's see what the call is. They came both at the end of the play there, Pat. And let's be honest, man. These guys played against each other uh, for four years. And there's a little bit of a rivalry, yes. a little bit of pride, upstate, downstate. So looks like a personal foul against the gold team. So that should be a 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. So they're going to mark it off. But yeah, there, there's that little bit of rivalry here, upstate, yeah. downstate. It's, it's for all the marbles here, which is the better part of, of the state of Delaware here. Yeah, and you got the blue gold buddies and the blue oh, gold fantastic cheerleaders. Event. And we'll, and we're going to announce all of those guys later, later on. In the in the broadcast here. But it's a, a great uh, event every year. And like you said, it's the 62nd annual, so. So here we go, a second down to 17 of coming for the gold squad. Sanderson takes the snap two by two with a running back. He throws a bubble screen out to Del Percio, and he makes a little man miss there. Number 13, Jawan J. J Sean Johnson of Mount Pleasant comes up, trips him up. Minimal gain on that play. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of those passes because we said there's no press coverage. So you can complete them. You have to come up and make the tackles, which they did a good job there holding them to uh, a short pickup. So third and 15 upcoming here for the gold team. Gold has come out passing the whole game so far. And there's a screen pass delivered there. Number 13, Michael Creedle of Glasgow. He gets back to that original line of scrimmage. It looks like there might be a penalty marker on the field, and there is right around midfield. McGonagall with the tackle. A.J. McGonagall, same marks. So it looks like there's an injury timeout here. A little concern. You never want to see anybody go down in these kind of an all-star game um, in this kind of event. Yeah. 12.09 remaining here in the opening quarter of this one. We will uh, take this time to announce some of the of the blue gold buddies here. We have them listed um, for the gold team. Uh, actually, let's go with the blue team. We got Lake Lindale. Devon Rollins, who I actually got an uh, opportunity to meet this year. He came out. I, I'm also a, a coach at Del Castle High School, and Devon goes there. He actually helped us out this year. Great guy, great kid. Rebecca Lopez, Leon Ross, Zilla Loy, Donovan Schwartz, Piper Luxton, Patrick Sealand, Riker Lyons, Edric Seth, Gia Marquez, Jackson Seward, and We'll announce the rest as we go along there. There was a penalty marker on the play. It was a legal procedure on the defense.
we'll see right here where co head coach Mike Judy of Smyrna High School has got drawn up for this one. Big third and 15 upcoming. Uh, I believe after the penalty, it looks like it might be third and nine, maybe? You're exactly, yeah, you're exactly right. Third and nine here, looks like, upcoming for the gold team. They got a trips formation out to the right, single back, and, of course, the lone receiver over to our sideline here, the near side. Henderson looks the defense down, claps for the ball, gets it, rolls out to the right. Looking downfield, he's got a man. What a play there by number four, Sean Carroll and Matt Pleasant coming up and laying the boom on Del yeah. Percio, drawing that ball loose. Yeah, what a hit. Dro made, a, uh, made him drop the ball and uh, brings up a big fourth and nine. You'll see. Sean Carroll a lot more down at Wesley College in yes. Dover, Delaware. So he's staying around as blue or the gold team looks like they might be going for it here. Fourth and nine. We're gonna see. You can see they got that Chip Kelly Oregon type feel. They got all those play cards on the sideline, Jason. Yes, and it's uh, Mike Judy, uh, mm -hmm. head coach of Smyrna, and we saw how many points they could put up every game this year. So. Yeah. <laughs> Had had the, uh, I guess you could call it the privilege of playing them the last two years at Del Castle when we saw that firsthand how impressive that offense is. Henderson empty backfield after the motion, stares down, looks down the middle and incomplete intended to target there was Tyreek Woodland of Glasgow. Nice job there on defense by, I believe that was number 13, 13. Jay Sean Johnson and Mount Pleasant. So, Turnover on downs. Not much punting going on here. 11:47 yeah. remaining in the first quarter. We, Blues taking over. And we've seen two Mount Pleasant guys with the with the big hits on the last two plays. Uh, good coverage. We've seen different. Uh, we've seen Blue come out running uh, the first series. They had the ball and Golds come out everything pass, pass, pass. So you can see a little differences of, of the both teams. You're exactly right. And I know Coach Judy's got his quarterback there. He's going to show it off. They do like to pass the ball a lot and. Blue team, of course, coached by John Reed of Caravel Academy. They're more that w they at least they used to be that wing T style offense. Mm -hmm. So a lot more run based. So here we go. Trips to the near side, and there's a run up the middle by Sam Raglan of the Tattnall School. Minimal yeah. gain on the play. He had a good year for Tattnall this year, Raglan. Uh, real good runner. Um, and he's tough to bring down, so that's a good job there by the gold defense. And number 33, Jordan Morvella, Sussex Tech, makes that tackle. Second down and eight upcoming here at the 49-yard line for Benick and the blue team. And here you go, I formation, old school football yeah. here, Jason. First time taking a snap under center. There's the pitch. Raglan again around the outside, gets the corner, gets up and around the 44-yard line. You can see the speed when he gets to the outside. Good job there by Raglan. It's going and to be very close, right? Yep, about one yard short. It's going to bring up a third down and one on the play. So again, that looked like Josh Hutchison of Smyrna leading the way. Coming over, knocking him out of bounds along with number eight, Brian Murray of Milford. Milford Buccaneers had a great season down there in the Henlopen South. Yeah, Benick once again in the eye, gives it a little counter oh. play and big hit. Big hit on the play there. I'll, I'll Number four, Perez Nichols comes and lays the boom on that. I'll tell you what, Pat, we've seen some hitting in this game. That was and phenomenal. Both teams have brought the uh, wood out. They're just laying people down. And it brings up a big fourth down and you might see them go for it again, Pat. Yeah, loss of two on the play, going to bring up fourth and three from the 46. Bennett gets the sign from the sideline. Looks like he's going to be in a shotgun set. Trips to the near side, single receiver to the far side, and a single back in the backfield. That's Raglan. Motion man. That pass is high and nearly intercepted. Nice defense there by Murray. Yeah, we've seen great uh, coverage by both teams in this game. Corey Kent of Howard, number 10, was the attended target on that play. So yet again, another turnover on downs. Gives the ball back to the gold team on their own 46-yard line. So it's gold's third possession here in this opening quarter. Uh, like we said, all they've done so far is pass the ball. And uh, when you have Nolan Henderson, you can do that. 
like Pat said, he'll be playing here at UD in the fall. Once Henderson once again going under center, trips to the far side. You've seen a lot of this, these shotgun one back trips looks. Spreads the defense out. Murray. Henderson gives it off here to the running back. Tyreek Woodland to Glasgow, he gets a minimal gain. And that's going to be a... And Jaworski, Andrew Jaworski of Friends makes the tackle, and there's a penalty right there. It might be a little late hit against the blue team. Yeah, that'll probably be 15 yards. We talked about it, you know, the chippiness, the, yeah. the competitiveness, the pride that's on the line here. Yeah, it, and you can see it. Upstate, downstate. And both teams now have one personal foul each, so. They actually, they call, looks like they called that one against the blue. Yeah, so that's a 15-yarder. That's an automatic first down. And now you can see the gold getting a real good opportunity here at the 35-yard line going in. Yeah, it's, uh, like you said, a big 15-yard penalty and moves the ball to the 35. 10, oh, 10 minutes remaining here in the opening quarter. So Henderson once again trips to the far side and there he has a jump off sides. He got big number 56, Demir Copeland and William Penn to jump. So move that ball up five more yards inside the 30 yeah, for the so goal team. 20 yards of penalties have them in business at the blue 30. They move the trips over to the near side here. Cameron Lewis of Lake Forest, Del Percio, and Michael Creedle of Glasgow to your near side. Up top is Jimmy Atkins of Delmar. Henderson's going to go to him, and it's knocked down. Really nice play there by number 44 in blue, Angelo Ortiz of William Penn. You mentioned his name a lot tonight, and a great play there by him. Just jumping up and knocking that ball down before it could get out to the receiver. Getting in the passing lanes, yes. like what we like to call that. Really nice job there by the outside linebacker. So here we go. Second down to five upcoming now for Henderson and the gold team. He's got Woodland split out to the left of him. Trips to the left side. Same formation. Gives it to Woodland who goes up the middle. He's got a little bit of a hole. And he's got a first down inside the 20. Gold team's in the red zone. Yeah, and a good job there by Woolen bouncing off. To pick up the first down and a pretty good drive going here. Yeah, Sean Carroll and Mount Pleasant came up trying to lay the boom and Woodland just lowered the shoulder and kept falling forward. So first down and 10 at the 18 yard line, 921 remaining here in the opening quarter. Woodland had a great year for Glasgow, leading them to a 10 and 0 regular season record. Yeah, two back set as Del Percio comes into the backfield here. He's going to split out. He keeps going. There it is, a quick screen to Del Percio. He's going to look to make people miss. He gets in the ten, inside the 10-yard line, however. Multiple have, penalty markers on the yeah, field. We have some laundry on the field. Dirty and, uh, laundry. Yes. One was down earlier in the play, and then the second one came in later, so we might have multiple fouls. Perhaps holding? With those plays, it is kind of tough to get a proper block, especially with all-star level talent here. Plus, when that ball is in the air, if they if they go and, and lay a block before the ball is called, it could be an offensive pass interference, too. And that's what the officials in this one and Bob Collins, the head referee, is talking about. He brings the coach of uh, Blue over. Probably discussing which, which penalty they want. So there it is, holding against the D Gold team. That's the Klein. Illegal shift against the Gold. That's going to be accepted. So that's uh, looks like a possible 10-yard penalty. So five-yard five penalty, penalty here, and it negates what would have been a first down yes. there for the Gold team. Yep. So a big play. Now we'll see what happens here. It looks like the. This looks like that bunch formation where you saw Will Knight yeah. in the backfield at right. all times for um, Smyrna. 
So this is this is that look. It's going to be number three, Kenyon Yelity. In the backfield, he gives it off to number 25, Najee Whitehead. He it gets, was a fumble. Gets to the 20. The ball was loose. Let's see what the officials say. They're going to give it to the blue team. Yeah. Good job there. Good hit, and they were able to recover the fumble. And uh, we've seen a bunch of turnovers early here, Pat. A.J. McGonagall, St. Mark's comes up with the turnover, and the blue team handles that opportunity for the gold. And it's going to take over first and 10 at the 20. They're deep in their own territory. Here he comes. Justin Benick, once again under center in the I formation. Tight end and a receiver to the far side, and it's a toss. And it's going to be minimal gain there once again for Sam Raglan of Tattnall. 5'7", 175 pound running back. So we've seen uh, Raglan run the ball a lot for the blue early in this game. He had a couple nice big runs, but nothing going on that. Jalen Whitehead came up and made a tackle from his corner spot from Middletown. So once again, another I formation for the blue. Benick takes the snap. Once again to Raglan, follows his blockers, gets up to about the 25 yard line before he's tackled by number 11, Dominic Covington of Milford. The old guard pull play. His guard pulls uh, and the running back follows him down the field. So third and five upcoming for the blue. And it's trying to see Bennett going under, looks like he's gonna be in the gun. He's gonna be trips to the near side. That's Nick Johnson, Corey Kent, and I'm trying to see, I believe that is Cameron Easton of Tattnall. Raglan uh, next to Benick. He takes the snap. Rolls out to the right side. He's looking, firing, completed. What a catch there by Corey Kent. Yeah, what a hit. Hit was there by number four. Perez Nichols, the number nine, Sheen Wilkins. Nichols, a Laurel, Wilkins, a Middletown. But what a what job a, holding yeah, on to the football there. Yeah, he got hammered, and he held on to the ball, and that's what you have to do as a wide receiver. You have to be willing to take those hits and hold on to the ball, and great job. Same yeah. formation is going to be Benick taking the snap under center. David Ballant up to the north side. He's from St. Mark's. They're going to quick screen to him. Ballant looking to make a man miss. Stiff form the Whitehead. Whitehead's going to drive him out of bounds, but that's after about a seven-yard gain. Yes. Good play there. Like you said, it was one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. He tried to get by him. Good job by Whitehead. Holding on, was able to drive him out of bounds after a six-yard gain. Ballant just used his size there yes. to muscle his way down the field. As we tick under seven minutes to play here in the opening quarter, a second down of four at the 37-yard line upcoming for the Blue. We're playing 15-minute quarters here, Pat. So College then rules. 12. A two-by-two two set here for the blue team. Benick takes the snap. Looks. He's going deep. And incomplete intended receiver by Corey Kent. Really nice um, coverage by Brian Murray, number eight. And, and Kent did a good job of adjusting that ball because it was a little underthrown. He came back. He fought for the ball. But like you said, uh, good coverage there. And, uh, of course, quarterback for the blue, another one would be Billy Sullivan of St. Mark's. He's not dressed tonight because he just got drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to risk any any injury in this one. Anyway, Bennett takes the snap, fires across the field. It was what a, a catch! That is unreal. Number 20, Cameron Easton between two defenders. We see another Tattnall player making a great catch there. And like Pat said, that ball was in between two defenders. I thought it was intercepted like you did. And Brian a, Murray wow. and Shane Wilkins of Milford and Middletown. I thought one of them was going to come up with the ball, but unbelievable. Easton making the catch. I formation of coming a little counter play to Raglan. He tries to get outside, and he's going nowhere. Nice job by the gold defense on that one. Number 66, 
And a couple of shinier vessels. flags again, Pat, as the law is pushing and shoving after the play. Now, shinier vessels on the tackle, and yes, I believe that is the blue team, number 36, Matt McCary of Del Castle. Yeah. That's Matt's a, I'm not going to, I mean, that, that might not have been a great moment for him, but Matt's a great kid, runs hard. But he picks up a personal foul on that one for the shove after the play. And you're already in a hole because it was second down and, and long, and now it's uh, a 15-yard penalty. So it's going to be a big... Uh, yeah, it's going to move him way back. This is where I like to say when I do... Um, PA announcing at St. Elizabeth. It's second down and a green mile. Yes. Jason. Second and a green mile. So second and 29 upcoming here for the blue team. What do you got in the playbook for this one, Jason? Uh, let's see if I can get something. <laughs> maybe I can get half, half of those yards back. Maybe that 15 yard penalty. A little screen pass. So here we go. New quarterback in there. That's number 13. Jay Sean Johnson in Mount Pleasant. I'm going to bring two guys into the backfield here. See what the Blues got up their sleeve here. Johnson's going to try to run. He gets outside of one man, and nothing's doing. He's going to run out of bounds as Whitehead was right there. Yeah, good job by Whitehead as he ran him out of bounds. Initial pressure there by number 80, Christian Moore of Sussex Central. Forced him outside uh, off his path. and Minimal gain, one yard, third and 28. As we yeah. take under six minutes here in the opening quarter. This way, this whiteboard, you see it just run and play, and then maybe a punt. Yeah, you're exactly right. Don't risk a turnover deep in your own territory. We're going to see Bennett going in the backfield, Raglan in there. Trips is going to be to the high side. Single receiver down here, Nick Johnson of Howard. Bennett takes a snap. Here comes the screenplay to Raglan. Makes one man miss. Runs into his lineman. That kind of slowed him down. Minimal gain on that one. Gang tackle. Brian Murray. Yeah. And Good. number 12, Andrew Del Percio of Newark on the tackle. I did like the call, a little screen pass. Uh, nothing uh, risking that turnover deep in your own territory. Now you can punt the ball. Yep, fourth and long. Here comes Maverick Jackson of Caravel. Back deep is number 14, Tyreek Woodland of Glasgow. And number six, Anthony Del Percio of Middletown. And both of them can take this to the house. Last time we saw a punt, it was a fake. This one's going to be a true punt. And, and it looks like it was partially blocked or just yeah. off the side of the foot. And that one, you're not going to like that one if you're the blue. That, that one well picked up. What a play. Heads up play there. Number 66, Shamir Vessel of Woodbridge picks it up, rumbles and stumbles his way down inside the 15-yard line. Uh, uh, no one down the ball. He just picked it up, and he figured, hey, I never touched the ball in the regular season. I'm going to pick it up and run. And he almost took it to the house there, Pat. Vessels, that is a lineman's dream. Yes. Vessels just lived out the linesman's dream. Picks it up and he's able to run. He's probably going to need some water on the sideline after that short run, but man, what a job by him. Heads up play. Teammates coming over congratulating him. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yes. That's sweet, dude. Ben, how are you So we're going to have first down and goal from the nine-yard line here after Vessels scamper. Last time the goal got in this territory, a penalty pushed them back, and then they fumbled the ball. Henderson lines up. He's got trips to the far side, single receiver near side, one back in the backfield. Fakes, looks, fires. Pass completed. I believe that was number 13, Michael Cradle of Glasgow. Tackle made by number 22, Brendan Hazuski. Of DMA. Hey, good job there by uh, Henderson just firing it in there and picking up uh, about four yards, five yards, and it's second and goal from the fourth. Really headsy quarterback Nolan Henderson is. Very rarely do you see him make a bad decision throwing the football. Henderson gives this one up the middle. That's going to be stuffed after a short gain, number 59. Zebulon Wright of Silesia Animal on the tackle. Of course, the carry was Tyreek Woodland of Glasgow. And uh, two-yard game. Sebler Wright is a big guy. You run into him, he's probably going to win that battle. And a real smart kid. He's a big man, that is for sure. Anchoring that line down there for the blue team. 
of the nicest guys I've ever met. So here we go. Here comes that, that full house look. No yep. true quarterback on the field. Anybody in that backfield can run the football for the gold here. It's a guessing game. You have to figure out who's going to get the ball. Yelity looks like he's going to take the snap. He gives it off up the middle and into the end zone for our first score of the game is number 25, Najee Whithead of Caesar Rodney. Yeah, good job by him. He just powered it through and uh, looked like it was a little counter try, counter try play. Guard, guard pulled, he followed the guard and went, took it right in the end zone. So Whithead just opens the scoring up here, six nothing. Gold jumps ahead and now it looks and. That's Coach Judy. They never yep. kick extra points. No, no. This is a two-point conversion, without even, a doubt. Even when they're up uh, 56 to points, they, they, they just don't have a kicker. That's what they do. Yep. So here comes that look again, that bunched look. So hard to defend. Especially when you got talent in the backfield, and it looks like it's going to be the same play with Ed trying to get in. And he is in there for the two-point conversion. So with 3.40 left in the first quarter, eight to nothing, gold on top. Yeah, all set up by the uh, punt return there. They had first and goal, and they were able to punch it in for the first touchdown of the game, and then follow it up with the two-point conversion for eight nothing lead. So we do have some all-star game records here, Jason. Just the longest return of a kickoff was by Art Morin back in, from Howard back in 1962. That was a 55-yard return longest run from scrimmage there's two of them there's charles cox of wilmington high that was 50 from 19 that was in 1956 and then dion killam of seaford back in 1993 that was an 85 84 yard run wow that's impressive uh, let's see what else we have longest field goal alex carlton of newark back in 2008 49 yarder uh, let's see, most yards gained rushing. Quadir Bryant of Lake Forest. He was in my class in 2011. 204 yards. Wow. <laughs> they must have been running the ball that game. You're exactly right. Most touchdown passes thrown. Jeff Taylor of Newark in 74. And Dutch Hoffman of Newark in 77. Three touchdown passes. Let's see what else we have. Gain. Most points scored. Gold, 57 Blue 31. Wow. That was in 1995. Most touchdown passes for each team. Blue with two. Gold with two. That was in 1962. Gold also got four in 1969. So just we'll, we'll, we'll continue to, to uh, announce some of these records as this broadcast goes on. And right now you look at the screen. We're going to like to thank our sponsors, the DFRC sponsors for this game for their wonderful sponsorship was such a great program yeah this is a, a really good calls like we said and a really good game and uh, great crowds every year here so we're about ready to go here they are going to kick the ball off that's number one jimmy atkins of delmar back deep well that's a return he, that's because he plays for delmar not smyrna but we'll see elijah walton back deep number 12 from conrad And he is upended there. Nice tackle on the play. That oh, is number late flag again. Number 15, Jake Sirocco of Smyrna. So there is a penalty mark on the field. We're going to see what this is about. Just thrown at about the 38-yard line. The tackle was made at the 26-yard line. It's been a lot of laundry so far in the first quarter. It's a legal block. A legal block there against the blue team. That's going to back them up. And it, we saw what happened in last, their last time. They got backed up by a late uh, hit penalty and uh, set the up punt. the gold touchdown. Yeah, forced the punt, and of course that memorable play there by Shamir Vessels. I'll yeah. tell you what, Jason, I'm not. Gonna, that's going to be one of the memorable plays in this one. Watching the big man rumble down the field. And that's going to be in the blue. It's going to be in the blue gold. Memory banks right yes. there. So Blue's going to take over first and 10 at the seven, at their own 17-yard line, 335 remaining here in the opening quarter. 8 nothing, gold on top. I formation here for 
Benick. Once again, Justin Benick will make the friends at quarterback, and it looks like there's a false start. Someone jumped on that one, Jason. Yeah. So Blue is just backing themselves up. And they're deep in their own territory. Up front, up front there for the blue team. Sorry, Jason. Number 77, Tyler Narvella Conrad. Number 76, Curtis Linton of Caravelle. See who else we got up there. I'm trying to get everybody announced if we can. Number 64, I think, at center. Now it's probably 54, Patrick Henry. That's Mickey Henry. Oh, no, it's not. He's hurt. So anyway, run up the middle. Raglan fighting his way forward. Gets across the 15-yard line to about the original line of scrimmage. Number 68, Antonio Johnson leading the tackle there from Laurel. 5'11", 275. Yeah, there's some... Uh, Big boys out here on the uh, lines for both teams. So the finish out up front for the blue team, number 61, Darren Matthews of Howard. See on that other side, I see number 68, Jake Reed of Caravelle. We got one more lineman I got to get. We're going to see in a second here as Benick takes the snap. And he's hit, hit right there by number 68. Uh, it's Vessels again, Shamir Vessels making Vessel a play and before the handoff was even yeah, given. Yeah, he, he read that play, like you said. He, he met the uh, met them in the backfield there. and What a good first quarter for Vessels. And the final lineman up front is Charlie Hope, number 55 for William Penn. So that'll complete your lineup out there for the blue team. Out there on defense for the gold, you're looking at up front at least 55, Griffin McCormick, number 17. Leah Stiles, that's number 88, Jamir Smith. I want to get that last lineman, but here we go. Shotgun snap to Benick. He is sacked in the backfield. And talk about having yourself a day, a quarter. Shamir Vessels with the sack on that one, Jason. Yeah, and then somebody back at the five-yard line. So they're punting deep in their own territory again. And Vessels. And get a good field position again as they've uh, – Look, uh, they've had a good first quarter. Vessels unleashed. Trying so. to make a name for MVP of this game. Blue team going to punt it away. This is number seven, Justin Benick, back there to punt. So look out here as we take to a minute and a half left in the opening quarter. The gold should have the ball on uh, the blue side of the field unless uh, Benick gets a great one off. And, uh, the ball is uh, floating up in the air. It's going to bounce over to 30, over to 35. And about the 35, it's going to be downed after a little bit of uh, dancing right yes. there. A.J. McGonigal downs it. So good field position here for the gold as they look to build on their lead, Jace. Yeah, with the minute 13 left here in the first quarter, 8 nothing gold in the lead. Looking to add to it. It's been very impressive performance so far from the gold team. So now let's take some time to look up front for the gold team. Number 65, Jackson Truitt of Appaquinimix up there. I believe that's number 72, Gregory Clark of Milford. At center is number, let's see. I believe that's number 79, Christopher Weatherford of Middletown. Number 60, Robert Mitchell of Cape Henlopen. It's only 290 pounds. Yeah, exactly. And then Jaron Carter, number 77, a Smyrna up front for the gold team. Up front for the blue team. You're looking at Zebulon Wright of Silesian on number 59. Number 56, Demir Copeland of William Penn. And number 61, Darren Matthews of Howard. Out there, a corner for blue. Number two, Kerry Galloway of AI DuPont. Working our way in. Number 58, Mike Ciccini. Ciccini, Ciccone. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Charter School of Wilmington. Number... 46, Andrew Jaworski, as we're about to get back underway here, and we'll finish off when this play's run. And number 33, Bill Stradley of Silesianum. Trips to the high side for Nolan Henderson. Takes the snap. Fires wide open receiver in the middle of the field. Is number 13, Michael Cradle. 
Yeah, he fights his way across for a first time, first down. The more co conventional goal offense uh, after a couple of run plays when they were deep in the blue territory last time, they come out throwing on this drive. Sean Carroll of Hurry up offense. Mount Pleasant comes up and is one of the first tacklers as we're approaching one minute to play here in the opening quarter. Henderson empties the backfield. Looks like they want to trips get to the high side, two receivers to the low side, quick screen. And it's going to be forced out of bounds. That was number one, Jimmy Atkins at Delmar. There is a penalty marker on the field, however. Yeah, another quick pass to see if they get a, a, block, a block or a hold. Finishing out that defense. Oladeo Adeliki of Hudson, number eight out there for blue at corner. Number 13, Jay Sean Johnson of Mount Pleasant. Number four, Sean Carroll of Mount Pleasant. And the other, we already announced the other corner. So there's a defense for blue. Illegal shift against the gold on that one. Move it back a little bit. You said Hudson. Hudson's moving up to Flight A next year, Pat. They are. Welcome to Flight A to the Hots and Silver Eagles. Them and St. George's Tech. We'll as long as St. George is renewing our rivalry as the Votex. Yes. Del Castle, St. George's, Hots, and all Votech D1 schools now. Play day. Yep. It'll be interesting to see. And uh, the second down and 10 upcoming here. Second and 10 at the 23, Henderson empties the backfield out once again. He's very comfortable doing this. Quick screen, caught, nothing. I believe they're gonna call. Say that ball, his knee was down. His knee was down. Ball was completed to Cameron Lewis of Lake Forest, but his knee was on the turf as he caught it. That means he's immediately blown dead. It's gonna be a loss on the play, I believe. Yep, loss of about three. He's going to be third down at about 12 13. For the gold team. Once again, empty backfield on this. Yes, and this is what we've seen out of Smyrna. Pumps the quick screen. Nothing doing. Henderson's going to run. Steeps behind the backfield. Oh, beautiful pass is dropped. Tyreek Woodland of Glasgow had wide open touchdown on that one and couldn't haul it in. And you saw the athletic ability of Henderson. He faked the throw, didn't have a receiver open, scrambled around, and on the run threw a great pass in there to Woodland and just unable to complete it. That's the skill set that's got him coming here to Newark, Delaware yes. for, for uh, the University of Delaware. He's not very tall. He's not very big. About he's six foot, one eighty five. He listed in our our program, but he's smart and he's got that athleticism. That's going to give him, you know, the the ability to compete at the next level. Yeah. So Henderson takes it once again. Empty backfield. Looks fires down the middle. He's got a receiver and it's a touchdown. Beautiful throw to number twenty eight, John Castro of Dover. And the second touchdown of the game for the gold comes on that nice pass by Anderson. And we've seen that we saw we see that play with Smyrna oh. all the time this year. It's normally Knight or Brown going down that the seam like that, and it's a great job by them. It's extremely well executed. extremely simplistic. It's it's pretty much a five vertical concept where everyone just goes down the field. You can't cover everyone, and for most teams in the state, going against those quick receivers, it's hard to keep up with them. So we'll probably see. Uh, Go for two again. So here we go again with this bunch formation. Yeah. Kenyon Yelity of Apo going to take this snap. He is going to give it once again. And Whittle trying to get in, and he's going to be stopped. Nice job there by the blue defense. Number 46, Andrew Jaworski was in that. Number eight. Oladeo Adelecki of Hudson was in there. And I believe that was number 44. Angelo Ortiz of William Penn stopped it. So 14 to nothing, your score, 12 seconds remain here in the opening quarter. And it's and been an entertaining one, Jason. Yeah, and the both touchdowns for the gold have come of the drive starting deep in the blue territory mm -hmm. off of, of uh, turnovers. So, yeah. yeah, so uh, good.
Good job there, and, and uh, well executed fourth down play. Again, what a throw there by Henderson. And like you said, you can see why he's coming to Delaware. Exactly right, Jace. Um, here we go, we're set up for this kickoff once again. Back deep is number 12, Elijah Walton of Conrad. On the kick will be number one, Jimmy Atkins of Delmar. Beautiful night here. I mean, there was a little bit of a threat of rain, Jace, but it's it's held off for this one. Yeah, and it's still it's still humid outside. It so is. It is very it's humid. It's gonna be humid for the next couple of days. Watch. Well, we can't really tell. We got the fan yeah. on up here in the booth, so we're we're, we're pretty comfortable. But I know it, it's it was very hot today. We actually did a youth camp today up at Del Castle, and it was humid was the, the appropriate word for it. Once again, we'll, we'll uh, continue to name um, some of these buddies here. Victoria Marsh, Ian Snitch, Clara Marsh, Callie Stevens, Cody McLaughlin, Jessica Stosel, Xander Meads, Jake Taylor, and we're back underway here. That ball will float into the end zone, and in high school that is an automatic touchback. Touchback, right. Ball Anytime will come out. it goes into the end zone, it's automatic touchback. That will bring the ball out to the 20-yard line. Blue will take over first down and 10. Let's see if the Blue can get their offense going. It really hasn't moved. Uh, had a couple nice passes early, but then the penalties forced them back. See if they can get a sustained drive here to end the quarter out. Goal defense is not letting much up. They are, they are very stout in this one. Here comes trips to the near side with a tight end. Receiver to the far side and once again in the backfield. And Bennett's going to keep this one. Crack back block. Gets nice play by that corner. Get a number on that. It was a great play. Yes. He was number 27, Deion Parker of Laurel. Great job coming up and getting a hold of, of Bennett's legs to end this first quarter after a two-yard gain. So, Jason, after the opening quarter, it's 14 to nothing. Gold on top. We're going to step aside here. Got a few words from our sponsors. We're going to be right back here at the 62nd annual DFRC Blue Gold Game. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So, for your next purchase or sale, think the Hadley Group. Brian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. And we're back here once again at the 62nd annual DFRC Blue Gold Football Game here at Tubby Raymond Field on the campus of the University of Delaware in Newark, Delaware. And got a 302 Sports Instant Replay for the two touchdowns we saw in the opening quarter, Jason. Yeah, two nice plays uh, for the gold team as they jumped out to have 14-0 lead. You see this first one, celebration of it. After it, it was a bunch formation and it was a handoff to Najee Whithead. He took it in for that first score and it was a nice play up the middle. Now you're taking a look at Nolan Henderson's 28-yard touchdown pass right down the seam and it was completed to John Castro of Dover and that brought us to our score 14 to nothing. Yeah, that, that touchdown was with 12 seconds left in the first quarter. And a uh, great fourth down call. It was. And we're going to take this time now. As you can see out on the field, there are cheerleaders. Yes, the gold cheerleaders 
are out on the field. There's a bunch of them out there. Uh, we'll go Alexis Bedford of Newark High School, Rachel Burke of Indian River High School, Zeon Chandler of Middletown High School, Jocelyn De Jesus of St. George's Technical High School, Rebecca Eady of Milford High School, Montana Farrell of Delmar High School, Kayla Garnick of Milford High School, Heaven Gibson of Lake Forest, Allie Gott of Smyrna, Shelby Grant of Milford, Janae Grayson of Apo, Melissa Hart of Smyrna, Mary Horsey of Cape Henlope, Chance Carmen of Indian River, Taylor Lynch of Sussex Tech, Kirsten McNamara from Sussex Tech High School, Alexis Peden of Sussex Central, Jada Register of Middletown High School, Rebecca Reed of Middletown High School, Brittany Rugg of Lake Forest High School, Bella Rupert of Red Lion Christian Academy, Courtney Russell, Sussex Tech High School, Caitlin Simps Catherine Simpson of Lake Forest, Jessica Tracy, Newark, Emma Thelmer, Apo, Caitlin Winsor, Sussex Tech, and Eva Young, St. George's Tech. There's a long list there, Jason. You got through it. Congratulations to our gold cheerleaders here at the DFRC Blue Gold football game. And we're on the way, about to get on our way here in the second quarter. And you can see who's under center there, Jason. That's number six, Billy Sullivan. Yes. He's had a... Oh, a little double pit, the triple pass. Sullivan going deep. Got a man. There's good coverage. And it is knocked out incomplete. Great coverage on that play there by the gold. There's a lot going on. Austin Colmery, his teammate of St. Mark's, was the intended receiver. That's good. Great, great coverage on the play there. It was number nine, Shane Wilkins of Middletown, and number 15, Jake Sirocco of Smyrna. But a little trickery there yes. in the first play in the second yep. quarter. Well, like we said, Bill Sullivan uh, had a great week. He got drafted by the Phillies earlier this week, and now he's in there throwing a nice ball down the field. 50-yard <laughs> bomb. I guess yep. you can do that when you throw 95 miles an hour. There you go. Sullivan in the gun, trips to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Near side. Sullivan takes the snap, looks, fires outside, and great play there. Number four, Perez Nichols of Laurel. Intended receiver was Nick Johnson of Howard. You see the, the coverage tonight. The yeah. gold team's playing really well. Yeah, they're uh, good defense so far. By like you said, the gold team is just all over these pass attempts. So here we go, fourth and eight of coming. Bennett going to come back out on the field as a punter. Twelve second drive there, Jace. Yes. Well, we had that last play of the first quarter too, which took twelve seconds. So really a twenty-four second drive. Bennett kicks it away. And Bounce this one. It will be down there by Nick Johnson of the blue team at the 39-yard line. That's where the gold team will take over. We're getting an announcement here from Sean Green, the PA announcer, that inclement, re inclement wreck weather. Jeez, tongue tied tonight. Yeah, it's heavy. making its way to Newark. It's heavy downpouring rain and lightning. Of course, if there's lightning, the game will be uh, under a rain delay, which we have plenty here to talk about if that were to happen. But hopefully that rain stays away. I mean, yeah. you would not like to see that happen. So once again, trips to the far side, single receiver over here to the near side. Nolan Henderson's still in the quarterback for Smyrna. Yeah, this time they're starting in their own territory. Henderson gets the ball, fakes the handoff, goes up the seam to Del Percio, and he's going to get a first down across midfield. And yeah, like you said, with five receivers, it's hard to defend because there's five different options going out there, and nice gain again. Jason Johnson and Andrew Jaworski, or now I'm sorry, that was number 50, AJ McGonigal, the two on the tackle there. They don't waste any time. It's like a Chip Kelly offense. And Henderson once again on the quick screen to Del Percio. He's got some room. Gets across the 35 where he's forced out of bounds by number nine, Carter Laney. Looks like he charter school. stepped out of maybe the 38-yard line. Gained a nine on the play. 
So there is so uh, second down and one. Second and short upcoming here for the gold team. So gold team's in a face with a second and one here. Empty backfield. So let's see what Nolan can do here on second and one. They feel like they maybe they got a free play here. Yes. One surprise thing goes deep. Scrambling out to the 40, throws it. Oh, good catch. What a, it's incomplete. They said it was oh. knocked down. It was a great job of Jimmy Atkins coming back to the ball on that, but was hit immediately by Kerry Galloway, A.I. DuPont, and that forced the ball to come out of there. Yeah. An incomplete pass, third and one. Good job by Hambo. Like you said, he came back to the ball. Second and one, that's a good play, Pat, where you just throw the ball deep because if you don't get it, it's third and one. You got two plays to get yeah. a yard now. So you see Tyreek Woodland of Glasgow come into the backfield here with Henderson on third and one. You see the big number one being flashed on that gold sideline. Let's see what that means here for Henderson. Takes the snap, gives it off, and forward progress should, and a second effort as well by so Woodland up. should be a first down here for the gold. Tackle made by big number 56, Demir Copeland. That's a big fella out there from William Penn, 6'2", 283 pounds. Yeah, you run into him, but you're going to be st stopped immediately. That's a true nose guard right there. So first and 10 will be upcoming here for the gold team at the 36-yard line. Coming in for running back, number 25, Najee Whithead of Cesar Rodney. He had that touchdown earlier and scored on a two-point conversion the and first he, time. He's a load, Jason, 6'1", yes. 240. It's like a Mack truck coming through yeah. there. For a guy like me who weighs about 165 pounds, that is not fun. Oh, there he Henderson is. with the pump he's fake. Down to seam, he's got a man. What a catch. And it's a touchdown once again for Nolan Henderson. Completed, number 13, Michael Cradle of Glasgow. And another touchdown pass for the gold team, 20 to nothing. Yeah, good pump fake there by Henderson and he had a wide open receiver. And like you said, a great catch. And uh, gold strikes again for a 20-0 lead with 13-25 left in the second quarter here. Great protection up front there from the gold lineman, not allowing anybody to get near Nolan Henderson. And when you give him that amount of time, I, mean, I understand there's no blitzing in this, but when you give him that amount of time, Nolan Henderson will pick anybody apart. So here we go once again with this bunch in the backfield. I think this, the fans sitting behind the goalposts were hoping they were going to kick the ball into him. And that's going to be short as Kenyon Yelity switched it up there and kept it. He gets tackled short of the end zone. So 20 to nothing is your score. Gold on top, 13-25 remaining till halftime. Yeah, good job there by Gold again. They're capitalizing on these drives. And let's take a look at the replay of that last touchdown. As you can see here, Henderson did a great job with the pump fake, pumps the slant, and then it gets behind the defense, and it was just a beautiful touch throw and really nice hands catch there by Michael Cradle, who had to shift his body, contort his body to turn back and make that catch. It wasn't easy. Yeah, and, but. and a good job. Uh, like you said, the whole thing was stopped by that pump fake. Mm -hmm. As a defender, you have to you respect bite. that because they've been doing that short, quick passes all, all game, boom. And the next thing you know, it gives you with the fake and then bang, wide open. Of course, in this one, 62-year um, tradition. Blue leads the series all-time 32 to 26, including last year's 31 to 20 win and 2015's 8 to 6 victory. Wow, low scoring game back in 2015. So we're underway here, we're about to get back here. 20 to 0 your score blue trying to get something going here if they can before halftime kick return to be nice that ball knuckles his way and it will be retrieved by number 13 Jay Sean Johnson he's gonna try and make something happen spins and he's belted by number nine Shane Wilkins of Middletown Beautiful coverage yeah. there by, by the gold team. Yeah, once that script kick kind of got by him, 
if, and you pick up about some football, you had no momentum, and they do. They're coming flying now, and they're starting deep in their own territory again. Bill position's been favoring gold all, all game here. Exactly right. First and ten from the seven-yard line is Billy Sullivan going to try and man the troops together here and go a long ways. Yeah, and the goal defense has been stout tonight. They really have. I mean, you look up and down that gold roster, it's just player after player after player. So Sullivan is going to line up under center, trips to the far side. He takes a snap, one pass, quick screen to Ballant. Makes one man miss, gets up field to about the 16, 17 yard line where he's tackled by Dominic Covington of Milford. St. Mark's to St. Mark's there. Spartan to Spartan as Sullivan hits a lot. Nine yards. It's a good play to bring up a second and one here and the playbook's wide open at this point for the blue team. Yeah. Let's see what they can do with Sullivan under center here. He looks at his play sheet, goes under center once again. Takes the snap, gives the handoff. And it was a smart job. I think he might have got that. It's going to be close. Carry was by number 12, Elijah Walton of Conrad. Yeah. And Very minimal gain on that and, I, and not much doing according to the official. So it's going to be third down and one. And good job there by the gold defense guy. They're just not giving up, up any yards to this blue running game tonight. So Sullivan's going to get back in the shotgun. He's got trips to the far side. He's given... David Ballant, some kind of hand signal there, and there's going to be a timeout here by the blue team. Good timeout there. It's been, this is a big play, third and one deep in your own territory. You need to get a first down here. Yeah, Coach Reed's going to want to talk things over and, and see what he can do. 12-10 remaining here until halftime. Uh, a couple more records we can look at. Let's see, we're going to look at uh, team records here. Most points scored was by the gold team back in 2005, 47 points. Wow, 47 points, that's a lot of points. Uh, most points scored in one quarter was once again the gold back in 1977. They scored 27 points in one quarter. Wow. Like we said, longer quarters here than normal high school game at 12, it's 15. Yeah, it's, it's, they're playing this college rules. Uh, let's go look back at some scores in the past. We said 2016, 2015. Let's go back, way back to 1956, Jason. The first blue gold game, the blue won 27 to six wow. over the gold. In 57, the blue won seven to six. In fact, the blue won the first five games in this one. 27 to nothing in 58, seven to nothing in 59. And then believe it or not, there was a tie. There was a tie in 1960, it was six to six. Wow, six to six, tie. And we go 1961, Gold got their first victory at 20 to 14, then backed it up in 62, 25 to 24. 1963, Blue, 112 to nothing. And then the following year, they followed up with another shutout with a 20 to nothing victory. They won three in a row in 1965 with a 12 to seven win. And Gold found its way back on the winning side in 1966 with a 21 to six score. So here we go back again as Sullivan just falls forward on the QB sneak and it's going to get the first down to about the 18-yard line. Good play there. Uh, we did, we did, that was a big first down and he just did a good job, fell forward, got the first down. So Sullivan once again trying to get his team back into this game. Yelling to his receivers, giving them direction on what they should do here. Players looking at their hand sheets. Sullivan takes the snap, drops back, looks going deep, looking for Ballant. Oh, what a catch by David Ballant. And the pass And I believe. And there's a penalty marker on a play, but Ballant using his height to go over to defender Jake Sirocco. Yeah. Great job by him. And it looks like he landed on the oh, ball, yeah. might have lost, lost his the wind, wind on that catch. What a, what a throw by Sullivan, and what a, and catch. What a catch by Ballant. And the, we got a flag, like you said, probably pass interference, which will be declined. Hopefully, Just a beautiful play there by the blue. Hopefully that gives them some momentum yeah. as they try to crawl back into this game. Hopefully he's okay. And let's take a look at that replay there of that great catch. It's, it is. It's a must watch. 
You can see Sullivan drops back, and it looks like we missed it. <laughs> so we apologize to him for that, but Sullivan just did a great job dropping back and putting yeah. that thing up in the air for Ballant to go get. Yeah, good, good job there by uh, Ballant going up. Like you said, I hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, fell it looks the like what it is. And I'm yeah. telling you, I've been there before. And that you land on the point of that football, you, you can't breathe. No, you feel like you're dying. Yeah, <laughs> it's really. It, 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 and eventually, when it comes back, you you feel fine. But man, for a while, you're uh, you're hurting. So after the big play, the Blues gonna cross midfield and get into the goal at the 49 yard line. Same formation, trips out to the right side, single receiver to the left. Actually, the running back looks like he's lined up kind of in a wing position, but he's caught towards the backfield a little bit. So Sullivan drops back once again, pressure coming up, rolls away and just throws it away. Smart play by Billy Sullivan once again. Great job by Shamir Vessels of Woodbridge. Getting a lot of pressure in this one. Yeah, he's, he's getting in the backfield. And good job by Sullivan. Like you say, got outside, tackles. Threw the ball out, so lived to see another day. Sullivan, Sullivan showing some sneaky athleticism on that. And I, I believe six two one eighty. I believe Bezels is going to Dell State. Going to be a Hornet. Yeah. Staying in state. Hey, I'd love to see the talent in Delaware stay yes. within the state of Delaware yep. at any level. At any level. D one, D three, doesn't matter. Sullivan drops back, looks Got going deep in. again, hits him on the wheel route, incomplete. It was a beautiful throw to Austin Colmery on the wheel route, but what a play by Jalen Whitehead just deflecting the ball, knocking the ball away. Yeah, separated the ball from uh, Comrie on the hit. And a good play uh, call there, and what a job by Sullivan. And we're seeing why he uh, was drafted by the Phillies. That arm, arm is strength incredible. is there. It is definitely there. And he's, he's got a decision to make. If not, he's coming here to play baseball at the University of Delaware. And there you have it. Best of luck to Sullivan in yes. whatever choice he decides. It's a win-win whatever choice he does decide. And he did a good job right there on the hard count. He got um, Bessels to pop over. So we're going to move it up. It's going to be now third and five, helping the blue out, trying to get this first down. And, and if you're the blue, you want to capitalize on that on this that big play to get you down here. This is, a, I think, a, a, a must-score drive here. So we're going to even the field out here, two by two, tight end to the near side, receiver in a slot to the far side, single back, Sullivan in the gun. Third and five is easier than third and ten. Sullivan takes a snap, drops back, here's a screen play. It's set up beautifully for Ballant. He's got a lot of room in the middle of the field, and he gets across the 30 for a blue first down. A little wide receiver middle screen there, yes. Jason. And or a tight end screen, I should say, yes. tight end screen. And we've seen that St. Mark's connection for now, two two big plays on this drive. They know each other so well from playing. Taking advantage of the Golds' over-aggressiveness. Yes. They're smelling themselves. They're winning big. They're trying to make every play. So Sullivan, once again, trips to the right. Motion coming. It's Colmery. Sullivan takes the snap. On the slant, the ballot a little too high. And, that's and there's a play. penalty by Whitehead. Yeah. Whitehead hit Ballant on the plane. It was completely unnecessary. Yes. On Way after the pass had already sailed over his head. And Sullivan got a little too much air underneath that one. And, and if you're if you're Whitehead, you just Jalen Whitehead, just let that thing go. Yeah, you just try and let up. But when you're down there, you you wanna you wanna make that play. You want to make like, highlights. Yeah. You want to make highlights. Yep. And uh, this will set the blue up. It's a personal foul, so that's 15 yards. Should put about half half the distance to the goal. Put the ball around the 15-yard line for the blue. Trying to get on the board yes. here. Yeah. As you can see, I mean, we see it right on the jumbotron. It was just just unnecessary. Yes. It was just unnecessary. And, you know, Vessels in this one, we talked about him uh, making plays on defense. It's no sh no surprise he was voted first team All-State yeah. defensive end. Yeah, and you can see why. Just a motor, yep. you know. So Sullivan, first and ten, trips to the far side. He's under center for this one. 
And this drive started from their own seven, Pat. So little a toss, drive. reversing field, and getting nowhere is Walton. Tackle made by Jameer Smith of Smyrna, six foot 250. It's hard to break that tackle. Yeah. It's a little pitch, pitch out and uh, just no room out there to run. But still, this is a nice drive for the blue team that started back at their own seven. They're in the red zone here. You want to punch it in. Sullivan looks, quick pass out the balance, gets inside the 10. And not about, about three yards short of the first down. Tackle made by Whitehead and number 11, Dominic Covington. That's been the hookup on this drive. Third time they've uh, hit each other on a pass. Well, they, I mean, they've thrown to each other now for four years. Yes. You can tell there's some definitely a little bit of uh, teamwork there between Ballin and Sullivan. They're on the same page. Yeah, same marks. Sullivan had a good year for them this year. Here comes the I formation for the blue team. We've seen it a couple times. You see number 44, Angelo Ortiz of William Penn come in to play fullback. Sullivan goes back, play fake. He's got him in the flat, gets it to him. Oh, what Ooh. a hit. Wow. Brian Murray of Milford with a big time hit yeah, big on hit. Ortiz. Pass was deemed incomplete. Yeah, and I think that's the right call. I don't think he ever had control of this. He got hammered. That's one as a cornerback you live for. Yes. You peel off your guy, you come back, you hit the man in the flat. and That was just a what a hit. It looks like Blue's going to go for the field goal here, Pat. Oh, here we go. Number five, Maverick Jackson at Caravel coming on. Try and get some points on the board. There's, a, there's only one... Uh, Referee down there underneath. <laughs> that guy there goes the second one. He wasn't expecting a field goal. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick by Jackson is good. Oh, no, no good. good. Just wide right. So the long drive for the blue team comes up empty as we hit 909 remaining until halftime. That's one that deflates the sales a little bit. But yeah. for the blue, you got you gotta be happy because you put a drive together. You, hey, went, you went a long way. You started from your own seven. And you went down there. The Vessels. We were it's going to the Wesley, Wesley next season. Yeah. Again, like we said, keep the, the talent, talent within the state, state of Delaware. And we've seen it. There's we're enough see here. We've seen it the, with a bunch of these players here today. Staying in state. I love it. So here comes the goal team. Henderson still in at quarterback. Two by two set. Receiver and slot to both sides. They really stretch the field. This is that Smyrna offense we're used to seeing. Henderson takes the snap, gives it off to Tyreek Woodland of Glasgow. Small gain on the play. Tackle made there by number 33, Bill Stradley of Silesianum. And number 56, Demir Copeland of William Penn. Yeah, with the 20 nothing league, uh, Gold can start running the ball if they want to. It's a three yard gain there for the gold. So Henderson back once again. Trips to the near side. Quick screen, quick pass, little hitch out to, to Percio who gets across the 30 and picks up a first down. Tackle made by Kerry Galloway of AI DuPont. Galloway at 5'6", 145 pounds. He's out there ankle biting. Yeah. Gets the man down though, that's your job. Right. Uh, Del Percio uh, Del did, a good, did a good job uh, at Middletown yards after the catch. And Del Percio, not tall guy at 5'9", yeah. but he's a load at 200 pounds. Henderson gives it once again. And running up the middle hard is Tyreek Woodland. He's still still pumping going. the feet. Gets to about the 35-yard line. But he ran over a defender right in the hole on that one. Three-yard pickup. Second and seven here. And if you're the blue defense here, you want, I want to try and see if they can stop. Uh, Joe Bedwell was on that tackle of William Penn. Henderson takes the snap, fakes, goes out to Del Percio, catches made, and he's fighting for more yards, and he's finally brought down. Nice job of 
pursuit there yeah. by the blue team, led by Bill Stradley, number 33 of Salisiana. Yeah, there was a bunch of them, about four or five over there, just gang tackling. That's what you got to do. Minimum uh, gain. We take to about seven and a half minutes to go here until halftime. See if uh, Blue can get the a big stop here and get the ball back. So here we go once again. Tripston in the near side. Henderson in the shotgun. Woodland next to him. Takes a snap. Fakes. Goes into the middle. Pass is complete. It's just two. Uh, it's too Michael. many wide receivers out there. It's hard to cover everyone. And a good job by Henderson distributing the ball. Hits Creedle across, across the middle for a first down. First and 10 at the 46. And Glasgow ran a very similar offense to yes. Smyrna. So, so many Glasgow play, you know, the Glasgow players on the field with the Smyrna players. And Del Percio of Middletown, who they also kind of ran a little yes. bit of a shotgun set. Right. It, it's very similar terminology for these guys. As Del Percio motions out of the backfield, makes it trips to the far side, pumps. Henderson is sacked in the backfield. Number 22, Brendan Azuski of DMA in on the sack for that one. Yeah, good job there by the blue defense getting that sack. Good coverage downfield too, making the sack happen. Azuski came across the edge flying and gets the first sack we've seen in this game, if I'm not mistaken, at least for the blue team, the yes. first sack. And, and he's had a, he had a good year for the DMA this year. As DMA was in the Division II football playoffs. So empty backfield here for Henderson as he sent Woodland out into the slot to the far side. Henderson sits, waits, fires, completes his pass. That's a cradle. He fights his way probably for about a gain of nine tackle made by number eight, Oladeo Adeleki of Hudson. Yeah, so we've seen Cradle with three or four catches in this game now. It looks like Third down and one. Looks like Henderson, what, Henderson go to the sideline? He did, here comes this bunch, bunch set. formation. This is their short yardage offense they like to run. Five and a half remaining here in the first half. The give goes to, oh nice job by the Blue D. Nothing there. Great job, Najee Whithead on the carry, but beautiful job by the blue defense led by number 33, Bill Stradley and number 25, Henry Geis of Wilmington Friends getting his first play of the game here. But the blue defense did a great job knowing what was coming yeah. and getting on there. So now the gold switching up troops here. We might see a punt. Or we might see Henderson back in. Henderson is back in and Henderson's in the shotgun. It's gonna be trips to the high side. Nick Johnson down here at the bottom of your screen. Woodland in the backfield. Henderson takes the snap, fakes, goes into the middle of the field. Del Percio catches the ball and fumbles. Yeah, it's loose. Picked up. That's Nick Johnson with the ball, and he can run, and he falls. Oh, he slips on the turf. The turf monster gets him on that one. Yes. Johnson trips up at about the 39-yard line, 38-yard line. Blue's going to take over. They get a, a, a possession here before the end of the first half and the rain is coming you can see the bands you can yeah. see the rain bands starting to make its way this way yeah here's an injury timeout on the field we're going to take the time here to announce some more blue gold buddies we got bradley moore michaela tucker dakota morit zachary twig luke morrow david ulp Leela Nargi, Alan Ventura Niz, Lexi Nargi, Daniel Voltz, Stuart Neely, Kayana Wade, Jaden Niblett, Fiona Walsh, Charlotte Orr, Andrew Whitelock, Joshua Page, Zaid Whithead, Gabby Perillin, Chase Williams, Jeremy Parker, AJ Winnington, Brandon Pyatlock, Grace Wisniewski, Brandon Pop, Levi Wolf, Salvatore Procope, Zachary Worthington, Matthew Ray, Hayden Wittenbach, 
And as we get ready to start play again, we will continue to announce these games of the Blue Gold Buddies as we continue to go on. And to be honest, Jason, that's who it's all about. Yes, that's Blue Gold exactly buddies. right. It's all about the Buddies. And uh, they do a good job, the players and the Buddies, having a great week. Mm -hmm. And a, a great, it, it really starts from the fall season, doesn't it? Does. It, it does. It does. Right, like around Oct September, October, and it's they're with the uh, the teams though, and the players for a, a while, and it, it's really good. Good program. It is. Sullivan takes the snap here in the shotgun. He's going deep. Nice adjustment, but can't get back. Is Corey Kenneth Howard tried to get back, but just couldn't get back in time. Yeah. Incomplete. Whitehead on the coverage. It was a long throw there by Sullivan as he tried to go down the, the far sideline. And, and there was pressure coming yep. up the middle. So whenever you had that, you tend to always kind of lean back on those throws. I can remember as a high school quarterback, you never liked seeing pressure coming from the middle. And, and you can see Sullivan's got such a – can throw that deep ball. He takes the snap here, gives the little draw play. Oh, it was a nice attempt there by Raglan trying to make guys miss, but – Tackle was made there by big number 88, Jameer Smith of Smyrna. Yeah, he looks like he grabbed him by a jersey, just yep. let him get get out of there. And these blue gold jerseys, they're not fitted like you see a lot yep. of teams' regular season jerseys. They're kind of loose, so you can get that a hold of of the uh, jersey on this in this game. So, tick under four minutes here until halftime. Storm coming. Hopefully, we can get to halftime, and the storm just rains during halftime, and we're good to go. Sullivan takes the snap, drops back. Pressure coming. He's yeah. going to be dropped in the backfield. Leia Stiles of Woodbridge. Yeah. He came through there really quick, yeah. Jason. Great play by Stiles. I think they were trying to set up what looked like a screen pass. Maybe that's why he got in there so fast. And Good job by the gold not letting that play happen. And fourth and forced the punt again. Yep. Fourth and 25 of coming for the blue. Once again, we know this weather is coming. It, it looks very ominous making its way across the Bob Carpenter Center. As Benix punt, it's a decent punt, bounces at about midfield. It's going to roll to the 42 yard line, about 41 and a half yard line, where it's going to be downed by Oladeo Adelaki of Hudson. With 2.57 left, that's plenty of time for the. Uh Gold team. We saw them strike early in the first half. Oh, they, they got that the quick first quarter. They got the quick strike offense. They got the quarterback of that quick strike offense. Not yes. to mention players that ran similar offenses and in the skill positions. And this team looks like they could be a high school team, like a regular yeah, season team. Right. The way yeah, they, they mesh, look, they it's look. beautiful. So we're ready to go. See a little bit of a different look here. Henderson, two backs in the backfield. Wide receivers kind of stacked behind each other at the top of your screen. Single receiver down here at the bottom. Henderson takes the snap. Gives the handles a reverse. Double pass. Reverse pass. Henderson throws on the run down the sideline and just over intends his target. Jimmy Atkins. What a throw on the run, first of all. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. And what a what a play, play call. design! Yeah. yeah, what a play call! That's what you gotta love about these games. They get a weak camp. Yep. They can put in whatever they want. They get always get a couple tricky plays. And we've seen a bunch of uh, both teams try a trick play. Neither of them worked, but they both were well designed plays. They were so two by two setup coming here for Henderson. Two fifty remaining. Trying to hold this rain off. It's getting closer, Jason. It's good. Henderson takes the snap. Draws back. It's going to be a, a screen play. Middle screen for Del Percio. Makes one man miss, but not Big Zep right. No. So lazy Anum gets a hold of him by the shoulder pads and brings him down for no gain. Zeb Wright saw that play come, and he remembers that play from the uh, playoff game, Sally's Middletown. Zeb Wright, I uh, sniffed that one out. It's a nice term I like to use. Sniffed yes. that one out. Some changes going off and on the field here. Number 28 in gold, John Castro of Dover comes in to play the slot. Empty set here for Smyrna. <laughs> for Smyrna. 
for Henderson and the gold team. Henderson's back's got all day to throw. Lofts it up. It's, whoa, oh, what a like one-handed catch. Jimmy Atkins. What a wow. catch. What a spectacular one-handed grab by Atkins. Play after play being made in this one. Gets the ball to the 10-yard line. Oh, unbelievable catch there. Atkins makes the one-handed catch. Then he picks up a block by Daniel McNeil of Red Lion. And that allows him to get down to the 10-yard line. And the rain is coming. Yes. It's coming. It's, I think it might be starting to drizzle out there. Yep. Under two minutes remaining until halftime. And it is. Here comes the rain. It's starting to make its way across midfield. Now the fun begins. Playing in the rain. Snap goes to Henderson. He looks wide sides. Going deep. Nice throw. Unfortunately, Michael Cradle couldn't get away. It was nice coverage on the play there by Aladeo Adelike. Yeah, great coverage. And Henderson did it. Henderson did what a quarterback's supposed to do. Throw the ball to where yeah. only your receiver's going to get it. it. You can see some of the fans starting to make their way to cover. It's starting to rain a little heavier now. 151 remains until halftime. You might see maybe they maybe they run the ball here. We'll, we'll see. Get this clock moving against the rain. It's one thing about this turf field now here at Delaware. It's always in good condition. Trips to the high side. Henderson takes the snap. Quick oh! pass knocked down by Zeb Wright. Yeah, right in the face mask of the Salesiana defenseman. You're taught as a defensive lineman, you can't get pressure, jump up and knock the ball down. Exactly good job right. by Wright. And it's another incomplete pass, so the clock stops as the rain comes down a little bit harder yeah, now. It's, uh, I enjoy being up in this uh, nice press box now. You're exactly right. But as a player, uh, yeah, this, this I would be all wild. I'd be all wound you're up absolutely if it started raining right. like this. Nothing like playing in the rain. Henderson rolls to his left, fires backside, and finds a receiver. Nice throw, nice connection there. Michael Creedle on a touchdown. His third, second of the day. Yes, third, and third touchdown pass of the day for uh, Henderson. So we Henderson. said earlier uh, three was the record, so he's uh, tied the record, I believe. We're going to see right here, Jason. Most touchdown passes thrown is three. So he just tied Jeff Taylor of Newark and Dutch Hoffman for most touchdown passes in a blue-gold game. The last time it was done was 1977. That was 40 years ago, yes. Jason. And I'm sure... We haven't seen his last touchdown pass here at Delaware Stadium. No, I, you're exactly right. Oh, no, at Delaware Stadium. So congrats, Stadium. congrats Nolan Henderson, on tying a record here. Before half. Yes. So up the middle, is he in? Yes, he is. He is in. Nice job by Yelity Avapaquinimic getting in there for the two-point conversion. And the gold continues to pour it on here, no pun intended. <laughs> Before the half, it's 28 to nothing. They scored uh, 14 points in each quarter here. This gold team, just they look like they're really meshing very well yeah. in this game. And like you said, uh, Gla Glasgow, Middletown, Smyrna, they all seem to run that same yes. type of offense. So the terminology might be there for them where they're gel it seems like they're gelling a lot better than the, than the blue team has. You're exactly right because you look at the blue team, there's a lot of different offenses from the different schools. St. Mark's runs a different offense from Salesiana. You know, it runs a different also from William Friends, and Wilmington Friends. And yeah. Caravel. And Caravel. And, right. yeah. and Caravel, that's Caravel's staff. So yeah. they're going to try to implement a little bit of their offense because that's what they know how to teach. That's the cool thing about this game, Jason. Yes. You get that melting pot of programs. You get a couple plays from each team. It's a good thing. I love it. That's that's what's great that's about what these makes DRC, right. DFRC so games. Especially the football game. Basketball, yeah, you can run some plays in basketball, but... The DFRC Blue Gold Basketball game is more of a pickup style game. And baseball, of course, it's, it's more strategy driven, not so much plays. So hopefully this is a quick a quick little rainstorm here. You can see there's clear clear skies to either side. As long as there's no lightning, we'll be yeah. fine. We had uh, a, a big rainstorm up in Wilmington earlier this, this afternoon, like 1 o'clock, 1.30. We and had they, one. We had, they had one now too so that ball is really booted deep it's fielded by elijah watson trying to make something happen here for blue and 
Wow. We'll talk about speed. Joshua Hutchinson just skates down the field and makes a tackle. Hutchinson from Smyrna just all over the place. Yeah. I'll tell you what, first game of the year we played them. Sorry, a quick, yep. quick little anecdote here, Jason. At Del Castle, we played them. And Hutchinson came down to the field for pregame workouts without a shirt on. He's a grown man. I mean, that he just looks different than people. 6'1", 195, but he's just chiseled out of stone. And he's athletic. You can see that. Crazy yeah. athletic. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Blue blue team behind the leadership of Billy Sullivan here trying to get something going with a minute 32 until half. He just give a handoff there to Raglan. I believe the gold's called a timeout. It's Coach Judy right there. He, yep. he he does not feel like it's over until that whistle is blown. Well, let's take a replay of that one-handed catch by Atkins earlier another, on the last drive. Another 302 sports replay here. and I mean, you talk about a catch. You're going to see it right here, ladies and gentlemen at home. First of all, nice ball. And then just look at that. Just twists his body completely around and then doesn't slow down. No. Turns around, catches it with his left hand. And still ga gained yards after the catch. It was and unbelievable. That was a sick catch. Henderson yeah. with a nice throw, and it was it was like a back shoulder throw. And you saw right there, just beautiful adjustment by Atkins. And there's not much more you can say about that play. I mean, it, that was that was one of those, we'll send that in to SportsCenter. Yeah. ESPN Top Ten Plays. Shout out Delaware. Yes. So it looks like we're about to get out of here this time out. Minute 25 until half. The gold still has two left, so if the Blues plan to run out the clock, they're going to have to get a first down here. So you can see Kent come in motion, make it trips to the near side. The bottom of your screen. Now motion going the other way. That's Cameron Easton. Sullivan searching. He's just going to fall down. That's going to be a loss, loss on the play. He was touched by Brian Ireland of Woodbridge. Third and about nine upcoming here for the blue team. First down, they can get themselves to halftime. If not, Gold can have a shot to put another score on the board. Yeah, they called their second time out for the half. So let's take a look at that last touchdown by the Gold team. Once again, you see Henderson in the gun, rolls out to the right. The, uses his eyes to get the defenders all towards the sidelines. And all uh, Creedle did was sit in the zone, find the hole in the defense. And Henderson, with good vision, looks back, just flicks it right to him, right in the chest. And that was another touchdown, the, the third touchdown pass of the game right. for Henderson. They've tied the record. Uh, and if they get the ball back here, <laughs> I'm sure we might see him again for a chance. Go for it. You're that, right. to, he, he just tied a 40-year 40 40 year record. 40 years. Yes. If he if he breaks it in one half, that's impressive. That is just impressive. In this kind of a game. And there's going to be an illegal motion penalty there, I'm sure, as this ball will be snapped. Nope, nope, nope. There it is. That ball is fired outside, incomplete. Sullivan, intended target on the play. Carter Laney of the Charter School of Wilmington. And if you're gold, you might decline it. Because that ball was incomplete, so the clock stops anyway. Carter Lamy of Charter, who actually played quarterback this season for Charter School, is out there playing receiver. So there is that illegal motion. You can't have two guys go in motion at the same time. So that should be a five-yard penalty, and it's would, a decline, yeah, yeah. so they're going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, it's a smart play because the pass was, was incomplete, exactly. so the clock Stop stopped clock. anyway. So now they get the ball and a timeout with the minute nine. So let's see what they did. Blue's going to punt it away. We got lightning advisory on the scoreboard. So the clock is running right now. Trying to speed things up. Benick, that ball's rolling uh, about the 44-yard line. That's where it's going to be downed by Adelike. 
There is lightning about 30 miles out. It was spotted, and there's an announcement going out telling people to get to their vehicles if they feel more safe out there. Or b the shelter. Bob Carpenter Center, right. which is inside. Yes, it is 30 miles away, so they will not stop the game until it gets closer. And hopefully it's a fast-moving storm and gets here during halftime. Although there is quite a halftime performance. We really yes. don't want to miss that. I believe there will blue gold bands followed by the cheerleaders. As like we said, it, it is all all-star. So here we go, Jace. 46 seconds. Can Nolan Henderson break a 40-year record? I would We're going like to find to, out. I would like to see if he could. It's an empty set right here. Goes to the left side. He's completed a cradle. Wow, what a job there by Adelike. Picking him up and putting him down. And a little Gold. bit of help there by Hazuski. But go ahead, Jace. I believe Gold's going to call their last time out because he did not get the first down, so the clock doesn't stop, and he did get out of bounds. Second and three. So they did call their last time out, I believe. 33 seconds remaining until half. So we just got an announcement from Sean Green, the PA announcer here at, at uh, Raymond Field. The game's going to be postponed because of this, this weather coming. They're going to postpone the game at halftime. Actually, it looks like they're going to stop it right now. Yeah, it's just going to be suspended. They're going to suspend the game right now yeah, until, until the, the weather, weather blows clears. through. So we are not leaving here at 302 Sports, but the game is going to be suspended and brought back once this rain goes through. And, and it's a shame they couldn't get it to half. Right, and everybody, everybody, needs, everybody needs to get to um, Shelter. Bob Carpenter Center if you're in. They need to get to the cars or uh, um, Bob Carpenter Center. They can't stay here because of the metal seats. Yep. So, the lightning. while we have a break in the action, <laughs> we will continue to finish off this list of the Blue Gold Buddies, which, of course, is what this event is all about. We have Tessa Eshelman, Alyssa Frank, Michael Aldous, Henrik Freiberg, Maddox Alexander, Evan Furr, Kennedy Arthurs, Jason Gazillo, Shannon Baker, Joshua Greiton, Jacob Balan, Zeke Banbury, Andrew Grano, Yusuf Barch, Justin Haggerty, Matthew Beck, Kerry Hallett, Tommy Berkner, Ryan Hallett, Devontae Bessex, Calvin Hamblin, Bryce Broody, Ricky Hargis, Jacob Brown, Haley Heaps, Addison Brunquell, Sam Herkheimer, Sean Burke, Cameron Hewish, Danny Callahan, Kylie Hockenbrock, Creston Campbell, Braden Houston, Avery Cannon, Matthew Hurwitz, Davia Chavis, Aaron Janus, Grace Cole, Madison Jeffers, Emmanuel Coleman, Donald Jefferson, Sidney Gopher, Austin Jewell, Robert De Grossiers, JJ Justice. That's a great name. Yeah, JJ Justice, Ian Drawick. Jason Kirshner, Lucas Ernst, Kayla Kosmalski, Dylan Ernst, Matthew Lavelle, Savannah Ernst, Kaylee Layton, Logan Evans, and Jaden Lee. They are your blue and gold buddies for the 62nd annual DFRC Blue Gold Football Game. So once again, I had to give them a shout out tonight yes. during this game because after all, this is all about the DFRC and the Best Buddies program. Right, absolutely. So we're going to take a break here. Game postponed 33 seconds until halftime. We're going to come back after a few messages from our sponsors. You're watching 302 Sports. 
Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create. At our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Swartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. 
Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Swartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Swartz & Associates in 2000.
Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your patience here, here at Tubby Raymond Field, watching the 62nd annual DFRC Blue Gold football game. Unfortunately, we're looking at a very serious weather delay that could have us delayed at least for another hour before we even reach halftime and the continuation of the game. Unfortunately, here at 302 Sports, we have uh, equipment and stuff we have to take care of, so we are going to be logging off for this one. However, if you do want to continue to listen to this game, if it continues on, then uh, tune into Fox Sports 1290 on the radio. You can listen uh, with John Busby and the boys. They're, they're doing a good job with it. You can listen on the radio. There will be no stream here from 302 Sports, however, due to the weather delay. Uh, however, it's been a blast. Uh, we appreciate um, you guys tuning in tonight, and it's always an honor to do something like this. So, apologize, technical difficulties there, but uh, like Jason was saying, impressive performance, Nolan Henderson tying a 40-year record that was held here at the Blue Gold Game. Three touchdown passes total. Once again, here at 302 Sports, we have to log off for tonight, but if the game continues, check out Fox Sports 1290. For Jason Wenchel, I've been Patrick Gariani, and for all of us at 302 Sports, it's been an honor broadcasting this game. We will see you soon on 302 Sports. Have a nice one. Happy Father's Day.